The South Carolina Department of Transportation maintains one of the largest highway systems in the nation at approximately 90,000 lane miles of pavement. To assist the department in making informed decisions on the selection of preservation and resurfacing candidates, the SCDOT currently uses data collected at the network level consisting of both pavement surface distresses, which are measurements of cracking and rutting, and pavement ride quality, which is how rough the road feels to the user. These measures determine a pavement quality index which is used alongside other criteria to develop a pool of potential candidates for the upcoming year. Like many other states, South Carolina does not currently collect network level structure data. This is because current methods for collecting such data typically use falling weight deflectometer testing and cores which have several disadvantages at a network level. This is due to the static and slow nature of the data collection process, which requires lane closures presenting safety hazards for both the workers and the traveling public. These challenges make structured data collection at the network level cost prohibitive. The Traffic Speed Deflectometer, or TSD, is a potential tool that appears to have the promise to change all of this. The TSD now enables state agencies to perform a comprehensive pavement evaluation including structural data, at highway traffic speeds. The agency receives common surface condition data, including automated crack detection, an image survey, and roughness and texture by employing dash and rear-mounted cameras. The TSD also generates a continuous deflection bowl, which can be used to assess the structural condition of the pavement. Recognizing the importance of pavement structural condition data and anticipating that future practice may require the use of such data, the SCDOT participated in two pooled fund studies. As part of these studies, the SCDOT obtained approximately 950 miles of TSD data in 2019 and later commissioned the University of South Carolina to investigate how the TSD data collected in the studies could be used to improve the selection of candidate projects for rehabilitation. Dr. Nathan Wynn was the principal investigator of the project. In addition, we examined the data by classifying each roadway segment by its functional and structural condition. For functional condition, we classify the pavement as good, fair, or poor using the current SCDOT practice of PQI. And for structural condition, we also classify the pavement as good, fair, or poor using a structural condition index known as SCI-12. What we found was that there is not necessarily a correlation between PQI and SCI-12. So what that means is that a roadway segment could have a very good functional condition rating, meaning that it has a good ride quality and little surface defects, but poor structural rating, meaning that the pavement structure does not have the ability to carry its design load without appreciable permanent deformation or vice versa. The implication of this finding is that with the SCDOT's current selection approach, there is potential for some preservation candidates to have underlying structural issues or, alternatively, there could be a structurally sound pavement with a superficial defect that is being placed in a resurfacing candidate list. So the benefit of having structural data to supplement current practices is that it provides more insight for decision makers leading to more informed decisions and more efficient capital allocation. Looking ahead, the department is planning on adding ground penetrating radar to future data collection efforts. This is to assist and provide project level structural data to be utilized in the calculation of a segment's marine life, similar to the work Idaho Transportation Department completed in a recent research effort. This concept has been utilized on a recent SEDOT project as well to aid in the design and recommendations of an existing interstate pavement. It seems to have a lot of promise. Uh, so we believe that this type of analysis and resulting data could prove very beneficial to our department as we move forward at both the network and project levels.